Rabbits have scent glands under their chins. They rub their chins on things to claim them as their own. When I got home, mom told me that Owen had texted. He made the soccer team. Now he'd probably have practice every day. That's great, I said flatly, unpacking my backpack. I could smell that she'd been baking something yummy. What smells so good? Mom grinned. I baked chocolate chip cookies. How many kids are coming over today? Only Jack, I said. Thanks so much for making cookies, though. And can I borrow your phone? I'll need to take a video. Mom nodded. Sure, it's on the counter. I put her phone in my pocket. Um, just so you know, I said, feeling like I should warn warn her. Jack is a bit different. I think he might have some special needs. Different makes life more interesting, Mom said. I nodded, though that seemed like one of those easy things people say to gloss over hard parts. He especially likes to talk about animals. Just like you, Mom said. Even more than me, I said. In fact, if there were a TV game show where all the categories were animals, Jack would be a millionaire. But when Jack and his mom arrived, I was surprised that he stepped back as Molly and Maggie came over barking tails wagging. Girls, Mom said sharply to the to the dogs, go lie down. As, as Molly and Maggie trudged to their beds, Jack's mom so, said softly, it's a sensory thing. Jack loves to read about animals, but in real life, they can be overwhelming. Not a, not a, no problem at all, Mom said. Can I make you a cup of tea or coffee while the kids do their homework? Tea would be lovely. I'll put the kettle on, Mom said. Make yourselves at home, and if you like to wash your hands, the bathroom is through that door. But no frogs are in there, Jack said sadly. Mom laughed. Oh, Emma, I told you about those. You're right. We don't have frogs in the bathroom regularly. That was just a homeschool science project. The frogs grew up, and we let them go back to in the pond where we'd found the eggs. Um, let's work in my room, Jack, I said, quickly to change the subject. My rabbit is there, but he only makes quiet sounds. I got a piece of kale and a few blueberries from the refrigerator for Lappy, and the plate of chocolate chips, chocolate chip cookies for Jack and me. Come on! As we were climbing the stairs, I heard Jack's mom talking to mine in the kitchen. Thank you for having us over. The other kids at school are mostly kind to Jack, but they almost never think to include him outside of school. So this is really nice. It's nice for Emma too, Mom said. She's been hoping for a friend. I felt bad that Jack and I were both getting left out of things. Being left out hurts. I turned to him and rolled my eyes in case he was embarrassed as I was that our mothers were talking about us. But his eyes were focused on my bedroom door, his fingers flickering at his sides. He looked a little scared. It's okay, I said. Lappy can't stay in his pen if you want. When I opened the door, my bedroom door, Lappy immediately put his paws up on the side of the pen, excited to get out and have fun. Later, I promised him, Jack and I have work to do. Lappy thumped his back foot on the door, on the floor. Rabbit thump to warn other rabbits about danger, Jack said. Usually, I said, but this rabbit is telling me that he wants to have a run and he's mad that I said no. Jack stared at Lappy, his fingers twitching harder. Let me out of here. Did he mean Lappy or himself? Are you okay? I asked. I'm fine, Jack said plainly without taking his eyes off Lappy. How are you? I smiled. I'm fine too. Lappy thumped his back foot. He's mad that you said no, Jack said. His eyes bright with excitement. He wants to come out. Was Jack asking me to let Lappy out? Hey, I have an idea, but it's okay if you don't want to. A good idea, Jack asked. Well, you get to decide if it's good or not. I said, you could sit at my desk and pull your feet up on the chair. I promise Lappy won't jump up there. He can have a little run around the room, and then I'll put a treat in his pen, and he'll go back in to get it. Jack didn't look 100% sure, but he sat on my desk chair and put his heels up on the seat. As soon as I opened the door, Lappy hopped easily onto my braided rug. His first three hops were always light and dainty. Little front feet, big back feet. Then he'd pick up speed, darting under my bed and out again with long leaps that were so fast he'd lose his footing and slide on the hardwood floor. Jack gave a high-pitched laugh. He was, 
He's a wascally wabbit, he said in his Elmer Fudd voice. He sure is, I said. In between hops, Lappy would suddenly stop and rub his chin on something, claiming it. Dresser edge, mine. Heater, mine. Quilt, mine. Bookshelf, mine. Lappy paused and rubbed his chin on my foot, his whiskers tickling around my flip-flop. You, mine. He's claiming me, I said. Then Lapp Lappy suddenly leaped and twisted like all the happiness inside him had exploded and lifted him into the air. He landed facing Jack. That's called a binky. I read about it in the rabbit book I got at the library. It means he's happy. I handed Jack a blueberry. The book also said blueberries are one of their favorite things. Jack threw the blueberry at Lappy's feet. He sniffed it and then ate it up. I should have known he'd love them, I said. My papier used to tell a story about how Mansour Lapin tricked Mansour Renard, the fox, out of his blueberries. What story, Jack asked. I hesitated. It was one thing to remember Papier's stories or to tell them in our family. It was a whole different thing to tell another kid I didn't even know that well. But Jack stared at me waiting. So I took a deep breath. It happened once that Manzur Lapin saw Manzur Renard, the fox sitting in a blueberry patch, grooming his beautiful red tail before he feasted on all those delicious berries. Foxes are om omnivores, Jack said. They eat both plants and animals. That's good to know, I said, but Manzur Lapin has magic, and this is a story, so don't expect things to stay completely real, okay? It's a lie, Jack said matter-of-factly. No, though I guess if there were only two choices, it wasn't true, I shrugged. Stories are somewhere in between. Do you want to hear it anyway? Jack nodded. Yes. As Lappy chinned the leg of the chair, Jack pulled in his feet tighter, his arms wrapped around his legs. Okay, so Mansur Lapin said, Oh, Mansur Renard, your tail is so glorious, but you've missed a spot. Mansur Renard was very proud of his tail. Where, he demanded. What kind of spot, Jack said. Um, pine pinch. Jack nodded and I continued. Mansur Lapin pointed right there. No, a little to the right. Almost. A little more to the right, Sue Manzu Renard was turning around and around, spinning so fast trying to reach the spot that he fell down dizzy. Manzu Lapin jumped right into those blueberry, blueberries and ate them all. So it was. I couldn't tell the story as well as, as Papier, but still, it had been fun to share it. Lappy went up on his hind legs to look at Jack. Jack let his arms go. His fingers twitched hard as he slid one foot tentatively towards the edge of the desk. Desk chair. I held my breath as Lappy moved his chin across the toe of Jack's shoe. Then he landed his front feet back on the floor and took off again under my dresser. Jack looked over at me, his mouth open. He claimed you, I said. Jack kept his feet up on my desk chair, but his hands stopped twitching. Let's touch him. You want to touch Lappy, I asked, surprised. Only his back. Okay, but he doesn't like to be picked up, I said. Sit on the floor and I'll put a blueberry next to you. As soon as Lappy came over for the blueberry, Jack reached out. One trembling hand, three quick, barely there touches. I waited for Lappy to hop away, but he didn't. He likes you, I said. Maybe because your name sounds like a rabbit too. Jack Rabbit. Jack Rabbits are really here. Jack reached out and petted Lappy again so lightly that I couldn't tell if he actually touched Lappy's body or just the very tips of his fur. Manzur Lapin, he whispered, and Jack Rabbit.